Decolonizing IP and increasing sound rights for women in Zambia is supported by the British Council Cultural Exchange Program, which supports cultural organizations, festivals, artists, and creatives between the sub-Saharan countries and the UK to create art, build networks, collaborate and develop markets and share artists' works with audiences. So with decolonizing the understanding of intellectual property, it's looking at um, the entire concept of intellectual property and how it relates to its entry into the territory that we call Zambia and how we've dealt with it over time up until 2023. Um, uh, as it is something that everyone can own, you can all, all own intellectual property, uh, everybody can uh, create um, and therefore create copyrights. Um, some people take ownership of um, patents and things that they are actually innovating. Um, but it's a, it's a lot wider in terms of uh, the number of things that intellectual property can actually um, involve. So um, we've had, I would say, some unique problems in Zambia dealing with intellectual property. And some of them we share, I guess, with other uh, emerging economies. And I think the entire uh, research has focused on a way to actually improve the way we understand it, uh, see how well it's uh, shared, <laughs> uh, experienced, and um, how people engage with intellectual property within uh, their creative lives. When I reflect on my experience with Culture Connects and the research project decolonizing the understanding of Zambian IP and increasing production rights ownership, I do see advancements in the journey of decolonization uh, as the Zambian government is actually working on a bill for parliament uh, addressing the 1994 copyright law. And there's been significant movement on the ground in terms of people connecting back to culture. Highlight moment during engagement is understanding how culture uh, translates to different people and particularly the feelings of inferiority that surround heritage and identity. Um, and the fact that younger people seem to be embracing a new hybrid identity. Uh, also alongside the fact that female cultural musicians are more in numbers and that kind of representation will probably do well in the future when things become a little bit more merged. I refer to myself as an IP storyteller because that's at the core of everything I do. I'm ultimately a storyteller and I love to interact with storytellers uh, no matter what form of storytelling they come from. So. Um, I think the only way that IP will get to the ground is through better storytelling, um, utilizing all platforms to get the message across. And I think that will contribute to the preservation of African creative culture because it will embrace everything about African identity, heritage, and remove this feeling of inferiority by making things um, a little more balanced with a lot more positivity in narrative. Yeah, um, I, I did get a chance to reflect a lot on rhythm and working on a project to codify African musical structure and it's just a pathway 
to work on both preservation and cultural instruments in new forms, providing tools that support um, digital platforms for music education. Decolonizing IP is an inclusive and peaceful resolution to a problem that should not exist. By being themselves primarily and reaching out if they see value in things. And I think there are a lot of people who are beginning to see a lot of value in our own heritage and assets and carrying our own narratives. Um, and we will try to ensure that we make it quite an immersive journey so it can be followed on websites and social media.